Hello, everybody. My name's Joel, Deb Mouse. Uh, I've been following Jonathan Wimbush uh, for quite some time, and uh, stay tuned here as he dives deep, really deep, into Cinema 4D and Unreal. Let's go! What up, what up? Wimbush here, and today I'm excited to show you guys this. Now this animation is a part of a bigger series that's officially sponsored by Epic Games where I take the Unreal Engine logo and I animate it in a variety of different styles. This one's called Geometric. Actually, this is the second one. If you want to see the first one, make sure you go to my YouTube channel. But without further ado, let's dive into this one. So I have Cinema 4D open. I'm going to walk you through the steps on how I took this project from Cinema 4D into Unreal Engine. So if I just click the camera here, we can pull back to see the scene that I have built out here. So it's just a real simple setup. If I click play, you can see we have the ball come out and 100% dynamically roll through this tube. We're just going through here. You can see the camera kind of following it through and everything. Then it goes through this hole here. So the next thing I want to show you guys is kind of like some of the cameras that I set up in here. So you can see I have a total of six cameras in here. Like if I click on camera one and click play, you can see this is where we have our ball come down. And then if I click on camera two, we're going to be inside the tube. And if I click on three, I did some interesting here. So you can see that we have a tag here and this tag is actually always pointing at the ball here. So I thought it'd be cool to kind of have like a dynamic camera in here as well. So if I continue to click play, you can see our camera is always following the ball. And so if you wanted to recreate this, all you have to do is click on your camera, come up to tags, come down to animation tags, and then click on target. And then that brings up this little target symbol here. And then all you have to do is drag your geometry or your nose into right here where it says target object. And then that means no matter where your camera's at, it's always gonna be pointing at the object that you put in here. So if I continue to go through these cameras here, I'm gonna go to camera four. And this one is the one where we start to see it come through there. And then camera five is the close-up shot. And you can see I have a target here as well. And that's because I wanted to have the camera just kind of rotate down as the ball was going through. So you can see I have a null point here and the null is right in the center of the area where I wanted my camera to always look at. So if I continue to play here, now you can see how everything is starting to work out. So I'm gonna come back to camera one here because I wanna show you some of the things that I had to do to be able to get the animation from Cinema 40 into Unreal Engine. And so if I come up to my layout tab up here in the upper right hand corner and come down to animate, this is gonna bring our dope sheep up here. Now, the one thing about Unreal Engine, it does translate to keyframes really, really well. And so what I like to do is I like to bake my keyframes in cinema. And then I know once I bring my stuff into Unreal Engine, everything's gonna work out according to plan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take like my intro ball here that comes through the wall and I'm just gonna click and drag it down here. And I'm just gonna start clicking and dragging all the different items that I wanna bake keyframes for. And so a uh, one tip too is right here, when you have cameras that have tags on them, it's always a good idea to bake these keyframes out as well. I've noticed that sometimes that if I bring a camera into Unreal and it has a tag on it, sometimes it doesn't translate the rotation right because there's no rotation keyframes in here. And so to be able to alleviate that, I'm just gonna click and drag my cameras in here as well. Then I'm just gonna click and select all these here. I'm gonna come over to functions, come down to bake objects, and then let me pull this up to the center so we can see it better. And so I'm gonna have everything check marked on in here. I wanna have it for the full duration, which I have 900 frames in here. I wanna have all these clicked on. And then I like clicking on all parameters just to make sure I have all my ducks in a row and I'm not gonna miss out on anything. So from here, once you're happy, you just click okay. Just wait for everything to bake out. And then you'll notice that it make copies down here as well. I'm actually going to delete some of the original files here. And then I should be good to go on there. And then my intro ball, I'm going to delete that. And I'm only keeping the copies in. And let me click on my ball roll here. You can see we have all of our keyframes in here. And if I look at my timeline, you can see all the keyframes here as well. So if I click on play, everything's just going to go according to plan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate these one at a time and export these out as Alembic files so that I can bring those Alembic files into Unreal Engine. So I'm going to select on this tube first. And you can see I have it under this no point here. I just did this for organizational points. So I'm going to click on this right here. Then I'm going to come over to file 
come down to export and I'm going to export an Alembic file. And so this part is important as well. So right here where it says file format, we want to make sure that we're using the top one. We don't want to use legacy. And then for the end frame, I'm just going to do it the full duration. So once I'm happy with all my selections here, again, make sure you have selection only check mark. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to find where I want to save this at. So I'm going to make this folder right here. And I'm actually going to name this one after this. So it's called top tube. So I'm just going to name this one top tube underscore UE4. So notice it's going over to Unreal. Click save. Okay, so that's saved out. So I just have some real basic materials in here. If I pull back from my shot, you can see that I don't even have everything textured in here. And that's because I like texture and everything in Unreal once I get in there. And the only reason I have like these couple of materials here is because on this ball, I know that I wanted to have one side have one shader and the other have a different color. And so I put those on there just so I have placeholders so I could kind of swap those out in Unreal. And for my neon one here, you can see that we don't even have anything going on in here. I just have illuminates. If I know I want to have any type of lighting that lights from materials I always just bring that in even if I don't have it connected to anything so I always bring that over and then for these materials it's just real simple like it's just the color I have reflectance on here it's just a basic setup all I did was change the color out to something different there and so now that we have our scene set up and ready to go I'm going to click on file Come down here to save project for Cineware. And if you use some version R20 and before, it's going to be called save project out for Melange. But from R21 and up, it's going to be called save project for Cineware. So I'm going to click on this. And so this one, I called it geometric first shot underscore build. And so I'm just going to name this one underscore UE4. So I'm going to click on save here. So my next step from here is I'm going to open up the Epic Games Launcher. Then whenever you open up the Epic Games Launcher, this is what you're going to see on here. And so I'm just going to come up to the upper right hand corner where it says launch Unreal Engine. I'm using the latest version right here, 4.25. And once we have that launch and everything loads up, you'll see this is called the Unreal Project Browser. And this is where we'll pick our presets out. And so we actually have one here for film, television, and live events. So I'm going to select this one here, just click next. And then I'll always start off with a blank slate so I'm going to click next again and then if you have a ray tracing enabled card you can always turn on ray tracing here so you don't have to do it later and then down here you're just going to save out where you want to save your project to and so I'm just going to name this one tutorial underscore breakdown like that and then I'm just going to click create project and now this is Unreal Engine. So there's a few things that I'm going to do here. I'm going to delete some of the stuff that's on the slate. So we're starting fresh and clean. I'm going to delete this floor plane here because we don't need it. And then I'm going to also delete this player start because we're doing cinematic. We're not doing any type of interactive experience. And then down here in the right where it says new plugins are available. I'm just going to hit dismiss and then project is out of date. Just click update and then we're good to go there. Then my content browser, we just have our main page here and nothing else in there yet. I'm going to come up here to my world outliner in the top right. I'm going to start deleting more stuff out here. So my atmospheric fog, I have to delete that. My sky sphere, my skylight. And I'm going to delete my reflection capture as well. So basically, I'm just starting off with my light in here. And then if I click on the details tab, I'm going to come down here in the transform. I'm going to click these yellow icons and this zeroes everything out, which is the way I like to work. And if you notice on my screen here, this is called the Datasmith importer. And this is how we import Cinema 4D files into Unreal. But if this is your first time opening up Unreal, you're not going to see this in here. So to be able to pull this up, you're going to have to come over to settings, come down to plugins, and then from here, you just come over to here where it says built in. Then you just search for C4D. And then you'll see this come up right here. This enabled is not going to be clicked on. So you're going to click on this. And then you'll see down here, right above new plugin, it will say restart. All you do is restart. It takes a couple of seconds. It's going to restart Unreal Engine. And when it does, your screen should look like this. And then you'll have the Datasmith plugin here. So from here, we're just going to click on this. And then we're going to look for the files that we actually had. So I'm going to come over to C40 underscore UE4. And I'm going to click on this one. So this is the one underscore UE4. So I'm going to click open. I'm going to click OK here. I'm just going to bring it into my content folder. And then right here for my import options, I'm just going to leave everything on because I want to bring my entire scene over. So I'm going to click import and it's a little bit dark in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for my light. So I'm going to scroll this up. Click on my light source. I'm just going to move this around so that we can see our stuff here. So on my X, I'm going to leave this zero. On my Y, I'm actually going to bring this to like negative 46. Then my Z, let's say like 246. 
and now we can start to see a little bit of light on our scene if I scroll back here. And actually, if I push in, you can see that we have a whole bunch of preview icons here, and that's because we're not using dynamic lighting. So to fix that, right here under transform, just click movable. And now we have dynamic lighting in our scene. And then you can see we have like a harsh edge here on our shadow. So if we want to alleviate that right here under light where it says source angle, I can actually just start dragging this up and that's going to soften it a little bit. And so from here, what we're going to do is come down to my folder here for geometric, double click this. I'm going to start off by double clicking on my animation folder in this red box right here. This brings us to our sequencer. So if I double click here, you can see now we have a tab for a sequencer and this is basically our timeline. So if I scroll through this, you can see now we have all of our animations playing and we also have our cameras down here as well. So we have cameras one, three, four, five, and six. The reason that we don't see camera two is because we don't have any keyframes on camera two. So what we're gonna do is come over here to our roll outliner. I'm just gonna scroll up so I can find my cameras. I'm just gonna actually click and drag this into my scene. So now I have camera two in here. And if I come over to my search tab here on my sequencer, type in camera. Now you can see we have all of our cameras in here, one through six. So from here, all I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna click right here on my camera. So it comes into the camera view. And actually, if I come up to perspective, we have a cinematic viewport, which will bring it into our correct aspect ratio. So I'm gonna click on this, and then that's gonna restart our camera. So I'm just gonna select on perspective again, come down to camera one. And there's our intro camera. And now we have all of our play settings here as well. So I'm going to click on go to front just so I'm at the beginning. Click play just to make sure everything is animating as is. And there we go. So now we have all of our animations and our camera moves and everything in Unreal. So from here, it's just a matter of going through, bringing in our limbic file so that we can actually have these two animate on as well. So if I go back to the beginning here, come back to my content browser, I'm going to click on content right here. And I'm actually going to right click and make a new folder. And I'm just going to name this ABC for Alembic. And this is where I'm going to put all my Alembic files. So if I double click here, and then if I click import, like this is the way that we have to bring over Alembics. We can't use the Datasmith plugin. So we're going to click this import button here. And then I'm just going to look for those ABC files. So I'm going to do it one at a time. I'm going to bring in my top tube or click open. And this is real important as well. So right here where it says Alembic. So we're going to use geometry cache. It says experimental, but it's perfectly fine to use. So we're going to click on this and we're going to make sure that we start at frame zero and at 900. I'm going to scroll down here to conversion for my preset. I want to use 3D Max and that makes sure that everything comes in upright and it's not going to be inverted. So I'm going to click import. And then once you have it imported, you'll see that we have a little file here and that has like a light blue mark here. And that means that it's a limbic file. So I'm just going to click and drag it into my scene and you can see it comes up in the world outliner here. So from here, you just kind of have to make it fit within your scene where you would have it at. So I'm going to come over to my sequencer Make sure I click my camera button to kind of get out of my camera view here and then just align this up. So I'm going to click on this, drag this out and just manually bring it into where it should be. There we go. So whenever we have it aligned, you can see that it's not exactly the full tube here. And that's because we don't have it animating yet. So in order to be able to bring in the animations, we have to drag this into our sequencer. So I'm going to click over here, my well outliner, just click my limbic file, drag it into my sequencer. Then I'm probably just going to type in tube here in a search to bring it up. We have top tube right here, which is what we want. I always use the search function just to be able to find stuff in my scene faster. But from here, I'm going to make sure I have it selected. Click on track, click geometry cache. And now I brought up our sequence in our timeline. So let me scroll up in my scene here so we can see it. And if I play this through, you can actually see now we have our tube growing on here in which I could click my old tube because I'm just using this for reference. So I'm going to come over to my raw outliner, make sure I have it selected. Just click delete, click yes. And now when I play through, I can see my tube is in there now. So the next step from here is I'm going to show you how to make these different camera angles to actually own independent shots so that we can edit them in Unreal and then get it all set up for real time rendering. So what I'm going to do is remember that glass material that I brought from cinema. I'm just going to use this as a placeholder for now so that we can see through our tubes. And then if I scroll down and then I just select on this. There we go. So we have some glass there and then I believe I need to make glass here as well. But this is just so we can start seeing how everything's going to play out in our tube for our camera shots. So from here, I'm going to come over to my content. 
I'm going to come over to my folder from cinema, click on animations, and then right here, I'm going to actually left click and just drag this out. And when I do so, we have some options here. So what I want to do is click copy here, and then I'm going to rename this one shot one. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to double click this. It's going to open up our sequencer. And what we did was we actually made a duplicate of our original. And so I like setting up shots based off the original, but I always want to keep the original one in here. Just in case I mess up, I can always delete the duplicate and then start over. So again, I'm going to double click shot one, come over to the sequencer. Then I'm just going to type in camera and then I'm just going to make sure I have all my cameras in here and I'm just going to go through one by one and I'm just going to start deleting these. So my camera cuts track here, I'm just going to delete that. And then I'm going to select camera two through six and I'm going to delete that just so we have camera one in here. So right here, I'm going to delete this actually so I can show you how to bring it in manually. So our camera cuts is what's actually going to bring our track into our editor here. So if I come over to frame zero, then click on this green box here where it says camera cut track, click on this and then we select our camera from here. And what this is going to tell on real is this camera right here for this sequence is what we want to use to render out with. So if I click on this camera button here, now you can see we're looking through the eyes of this camera. And this is going to be what we have for shot one. So I'm going to duplicate it for shot two. So I'm going to come back to my original, click and drag over, click down a copy, and I'm going to rename this shot two. Double click, and I'm just going to go through the same exact process here. And I'm not going to do it for all the cameras for this example. I just kind of want to show you the layout and then I'm going to show you how to edit these together. So again, camera cut, delete that, delete camera one. Then I'm going to come to camera three through six, delete these. And then I'm going to add a brand new camera cut. Make sure I select camera, come down to camera two. Now when I click on this, now it's going to show us this point of view from our second camera. So whenever we click play, we can see it's starting to animate through. So now what I want to do is I'm going to set up a blank sequencer so that I can start clicking and dragging these shots into that sequencer and start to edit everything out. So right here under cinematics, I'm going to click on add level sequence and I'm just going to name this one Unreal Edit and then click save. And then if I click back on my content browser, you can see that we have our Unreal Edit sequence here. If I double click on this and then come to sequence tab, it's completely blank. So what I could do now is I could start clicking and dragging those shots into this and we can edit it out just like if we're working in Premiere or Blackmagic Resolve. So what I'm going to do now is come back to my second content browser, double click on these, come down to my animation folder and just start clicking these shots and dragging them over. So I have shot one here and if I click on the camera, we can look through the lens of this camera. So I'm just gonna kinda pull this out. So if I come down here as well, it only made this sequence like 330, in which I believe we had 900 frames. So I'm gonna select enter there. Then I'm gonna go all the way to the end, hit this bracket. And so now we have a 900 frame sequence. So I'm just gonna select the end of my sequence here, click and drag this over to about, what was it? Like 190-ish, 189. And so I know from here is where I want to start my next shot. So I'm going to select shot two, just drag that into here, and then bring it all the way to the beginning. So I know our shots are going to align. And then if you have this right here, this magnet set on, this is going to enable snapping. So if I just click and drag it, it should snap it to the end of the next shot, which is right there. So if I click on this top camera, now this is going to look through all the different shots. So if I select this, it's going to play through shot one then automatically go to shot two. Then I can have shot three start about there. So let's say like around 269. I'm just going to click and drag this over to 269 and then bring in shot three. Same exact process. Make this go all the way to the beginning. Click and drag this over. And you can already start to see how powerful this is. So I can have this go to like 364. Go somewhere right there. Then I can actually hit the end bracket because I'm going to stop here. Then if I click on this, I can make it a loop. So now if I click play, now we can see playing back in real time all of our different shots. Then from here, all you have to do is go through, set up the rest of your shots and then, you know, put in more lights and add materials in which I'm going to show you the final version of my shot here. So I can show you some of the stuff that I did for ray tracing. And then I'm going to do a preview of real time rendering so you can see how fast this renders out. When it's all said and done, this is what the final scene looks like. So if I come up to perspective, come down to cinematic viewport, 
I'm just going to come down here to my sequencer and actually click this camera so I can see everything play out down here. You can see where we left off. We left off at shot three, but I completed them out down here for my final edit. So if I click play, actually, let me click the camera here and I'm going to click play. You can see everything playing out in real time. And we're going through shot by shot and everything looks good there. All right, so that's what the sequence looks like in real time playing back in Unreal. Let me show you some stuff that I did that just kind of bring this thing to life. So I have this over here, the post process volume in which if you want to find it, come over to visual effects and you would just add it here. And what this does here, it allows us to control everything in our scene coming from ray tracing to shadows to actually color grading. And we can actually add LUTs in here as well. So if I click on post process and volume, and then I just start scrolling through here. You can see we have stuff like bloom effect, which if I turn this off, you can see the highlights of the bloom going off. So let me actually pull out from my camera here, right there. So if I click on this again, click on bloom, you can see it actually turns it off. And so what this does is give us like a realistic effect from our neon light that we brought from cinema. Then we could come down here even further click on chromatic apparition. I just add a little bit, but that's cool that we could do this in Unreal Engine as well. So you can see where I'm going. Like this is like a post effects studio all built within Unreal. I have lens flares down here as well. But the cool thing I really want to show you guys was down here in the color grading. So if I come down here to global, I actually have contrast turned on. So let me come back to my camera shots here. Let me find a good shot to maybe showcase this with. So maybe this shot here. If I turn on and off contrast, you can see that we're able to add, you know, like it curves to our scene here. And if I turn this up even more, you can see the contrast really affecting our scene. So I thought that's cool because we don't even need like anything outside of Unreal. Like we get like our final shots the way it needs to look all within Unreal Engine. We have complete control over everything from shadows, the mids, the highlights. And if I click down here on MISC, I even have a LUTs file in here. So I brought some LUTs here off of the marketplace and I have some free ones on there. But if I turn this off, you can see how it completely changes the dynamic of the scene. So if I continue to scroll down, you can see we can actually add ambient occlusion as well. So if I turn off the intensity, you can see it, especially up in this little corner here, I'm turning on the AO in there. And then down here, I wanna show you guys the ray tracing translucency because this had a really big effect on my scene. So if I come over here, maybe to like around this shot here, this really had an effect on our glass here. So if I turn off refractions, you can see how it's, you know, this is with ray tracing on and this is with it off. And so I like the way that it looked with this. I mean, this was just my artistic interpretation of how I wanted this to look, but you can see how ray tracing is really making a huge difference in our scene. Like even if I click on, let's say reflections. And right now I have ray tracing on. If I come over here and do screen space, you can see it looks totally different in our scene. So once we have our scene and everything set up in here, the last thing I wanna do is show you guys real-time rendering. This is my favorite part to show everybody. This is the main reason that a lot of people come into Unreal is because I like to utilize this feature here. So once I have my setup here all set out and laid out the way that I want, I'm gonna come up here to where his window Come down to cinematics, come down to movie render queue, click on this, we click on render, and then I'm just gonna look for, I can actually type it here in my search, type start, because I wanna do my start shot. There we go. And then right here, I'm gonna click unsave config, and this is where we're gonna configure our files out at. And then right here by default, it's gonna do a JPEG. And then if I click on output, this is where we're gonna save everything out from. Select folder. I think everything else here is fine. So I'm just gonna click accept. And then once you're ready to render out, just click render local, and then give us a second to get everything warmed up. But as you can see down here, we're just rushing through our frames, like total frame count. This is all running in real time. It's gonna go through each shot and it tells you the frame, you know, it tells you the shot number here and the frame count is going up. And as you can see right here, I mean, our estimated time started at what, like 20 seconds? And it's just flying through these shots here. You're seeing how everything is playing back. And then in the end, all you have to do is bring this into your editor. Like I had three separate shots set up for the final product. So I just rendered these out scene by scene, brought them into an editor, rendered out, and I was good to go from there.
So I want to thank Max on the Epic Games for allowing me to speak here today. If you found this to be informational, make sure you go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jonathan Wimbush, where you're going to find the rest of the stuff that I'm doing with Epic Games there. And then make sure you go to mograph.com because any day I'm going to be dropping my course there. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you guys soon. Thanks again. Take care.